Welcome back to the Agent Gold Mine. Here is what to expect in today's show. Exactly how to manage your showings. We go through the five tips to take what could be a mediocre showing experience for your buyers and transform it into something magical. We talk about exactly what to say, exactly how to prepare. And Allie and I both give our feedback because this show is just us. So if you are interested in that, plus some fun stuff at the end where Allie and I give life updates, then buckle up, gold miners, and welcome to the show. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Oh my gosh, we are talking about five quick tips, not five quick dicks. <laughs> rock your next showing. Allie and I were talking about what we we're going to cover in today's show and it's just the two of us. And words are hard today, guys. Both of us are sick. Both of us show show up matching. We're adorable. Go over to YouTube. We're wearing hats. It's very cute. Although Allie showered and still wore a hat. Whereas guys, if you ever see me in a hat, it's because I haven't washed my hair in multiple days. Uh, also, if I smell really good, if you're like, oh my God, you smell so good. It's literally because I haven't showered and I've just doused myself. So it's really a red a red flag to just run. So that's your first quick dick of the day. <laughs> Hi, Allie. Lovely to see you. Oh, nice, nice seeing you too. And it's very nice not smelling you. Love you. Yes. As always, <laughs> love you too. Okay, guys, this is what happened. We had a guest and he could not make it. He had to reschedule. But we're not gonna reschedule on you guys. Like we're so committed to giving you information. And so today we are talking about some tips to rock your next showing. And then also stick around to the end for some super fun updates from Allie and I in our life and more just shooting the shit because we do love to do that. Okay, so Allie, this is this is my thought. I'm going to run through one tip at a time. And then after I'm done with the tip, I'm going to ask you for, you know, adding on to it and your perspective, your fucking Allie spin. Good. Let's do it. Let's go for it. Let's fucking do it. Okay. Gotcha. So guys, just so you know, this, the five, the tips that we're going over today, the, to set the stage, you've already had your initial contact with this person. You've already gathered information on what they're looking for. Buyers, buyers. This is buyers. We're talking about working with buyers at the showing. You've already set the initial expectations based on your market. If you, you know, like Jason Boyce, one of our pillars in um, Connecticut, if you're not offering 30 grand over, you're not getting it. If you're not like coming in all cash, 30 grand over, you're not getting it. So if you have a market like that, have this conversation before you go up to the showing because most people can't even afford that. Anyway, at this point also, they're pre-approved. You have sent them homes to look for. They've narrowed down the list. You have Google Maps, the most efficient route. You booked the homes in showing time or whatever your showing service is. And yeah, we're at, we're talking about the showing itself because it hit me. It was a realization. Ali, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there's, you know, when you show up and there's another agent showing the house and you just see them, they literally just opened the door and they are like, yeah, look around and let me know if you have questions. And then they like stand by the front doorway on their phone and just fucking stand there. Have you seen that? Did you know that's a thing? Like at an open house? No, I just mean like at a showing, if you've ever observed, like hypothetically, if your timing lines oh. up and you like show up early, like showing, yeah. and they're just standing there I they're have not doing anything. Yes, yes. Dude, I saw that and I was like, what? That's not, that's not, this is why real estate agents have a bad name. This is yeah. the exact moment. So anyway, we're not that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tip number one is you're going to prepare. Prepare yourself and a present for the buyers. What do I mean by that? Prepare yourself for the showing. So you, this is what I used to do. You can do it however you want. I know there are people who are really big fans of maybe like an iPad or like having information on their phone. I personally never liked that for showings just because I don't, I always felt weird. If my face is in my phone, I always feel like the buyer is, they're not paying attention to me. They're not paying attention to me. Even if you are working for that person, there's just always a stigma. Whereas if your head is in the phone, you're not paying attention to me. So I fucking printed my information out. So that way I can keep my head out of my phone for showing. So in this tip number one, prepare, I am printing the agent view of the MLS cut sheets. And if they are a high C personality on the desk, if they like details, if they ask you a shit, if they're questions, 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 
I'm also printing what we call in North Carolina, which is a realist report, which has like taxes for last year, the last time it was sold, you know, how much the seller purchased it for, the loan type, et cetera, all that stuff. So extra details. But I'm printing this stuff and for per showing, let's say hypothetically we're doing three today, and I'm putting it in chronological order on a clipboard. I fucking love a clipboard. I really do. It makes me feel like I am, you know, buyer's agent galore. I'm a superstar. So I have the shit printed on my clipboard. And for each of the MLS cut sheets, uh, I have given myself even extra more cheats. So on the front of the MLS cut sheet, I have on the top right-hand corner, access details, like hypothetically lockbox type, lockbox location. I don't know. Ali, have you ever showed up at a house and you're like trying to show it and you go up to the front door all confident? And the fucking lockbox isn't there. That is why there? I always show up at like for somehow that has not happened to me yet. But also <laughs> majority of my buyer clients are out of country. So I'm usually doing it on my oh, own. Nice. I could take my sweet ass time going, oh, walk in the okay. perimeter several times being like, where did they bury this thing underground? Where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you're, if you work with clients like in person and I never drove them in my car, like I didn't do that. I thought it was fucking weird. I did the little caravan thing. Meet me there. Ah, and then don't drive like an asshole to avoid judgment. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So show Dude, up. An- and- another thing oh, there is I, I, if you told, so I would tell, I, I would give the routing, you know, which house in which order, you know, the day before, this is what to expect tomorrow. Right. And then, so therefore, by the time we finish house number one, going to house number two, they would have booked it. So meanwhile, I'm like trying to get all like my stuff together. Okay. You know, like they would always beat me to the next house. (laughs) So that's like the one thing where I was like, maybe if they were in my car, we could all get there together. You know, (laughs) dude, are you sure you don't just drive like a grandma? I could see that. Okay. I probably do drive. We've actually never. We, yeah, we've never been in a car together. I used to get speeding tickets every single year up until five years ago. So I Mm. think maybe now I've transitioned to grandma style driving. Arizona. (laughs) <laughs> fair um okay let's see so yeah yeah on my little cheat sheet my mls cut sheets for myself the asian view i got the lockbox type we talked about that the location and alarm information y'all and i have a really funny story that i will not tell on the air but it's hilarious so if you want to know hit me up and i just told ali but we're cutting it from the recording because it should not be there so if you want to know hit either of us up and we will share you share, fill you in on that story um over the phone so it's not in writing <laughs> it's that good um okay <laughs> one thing right too along. i, yeah, I don't okay. know if you know this uh, going back to the phone like just having your phone there gotcha <laughs> yeah, I, I don't okay. know if you know this going back to the phone like just having your phone there there are studies that are sh- that are out there of even if you're not Okay. So even if you're on your phone, looking at the comps, looking at, you know, doing whatever you, your agent you're, you're doing, even if you're doing stuff for your clients on your phone, that reduces, that eliminates the trust because it eliminates more eye contact and it doesn't give them anything tan, like tangible to hold. So like you mentioned, you know, or I think, I don't know if you got there yet, actually. The, We've the been paper. to it yet, but that's fine. Oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, we'll get there. Okay. But the study, the overall point is studies have shown that even you as the agent, so not only does it cut rapport and puts like a, a barrier between you two if you're looking at your phone, even if you're doing work for them and they know it, but you as an agent, there are studies shown that like it just having your phone out, even if you're not even looking at it, reduces your concentration by 20%. That's just by having it out. Like you're not even, you don't even have it unlocked. That's wild. So it is that's so why. And I believe yeah. it. Yes. Oh, 100%. Carry on, yeah. Shelby. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And fuck, one more side note. If you're, this, this pertains to you to when you are working. If you're trying to concentrate agents out there, you're like on your computer, but your phone is sitting next to you. I can feel it suck my attention. Like I feel it. So if, you know, tip is, do not even just on, well, this depends too, if you're like trying to wait for every call, but like, I like to work on do not disturb, not even vibrate and leave my phone outside of my room. But anyway, okay. We fucking sidebar. It's great. I love it. Cool. So we have our printed shit. (laughs) The the next thing besides the lockbox type, the location and the alarm. So we were talking about that's the top right hand corner of each page. 
also the time in which you booked the showing. So that way, if you need to make an adjustment, if you're running late, if you're early, whatever, you can contact the listing agent. You can call them, give them a heads up, especially if it's seller occupied. These are all things. Just think, try to think critically. But on the sheet also, what I used to do because my brain is dog shit. Like I can't remember anything. So I would take a highlighter and I would do a little tiny tick mark highlight by all of the things that I knew that I wanted to use to sound smart in the house. So hypothetically, I do a little highlight by like days on market, square footage, you know, age, inclusions, exclusions, like septic sewer, HOA, costs, stuff like that, remarks, like if there's any concessions, because I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but like when you're actually walking the house, if you have all that stuff on a clipboard where you can just look down and the highlighted thing jumps out at you, you can walk around, you know, and be like, Yeah. And this is a three bed, two bath that was built in 1972. And you can just say these things and they're like, oh my God, they're so fucking smart. And you're not actually smart. You're just reading. Yeah. Glancing, I would say. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I just do this briefing thing to be like, (laughs) Ali, do you have anything that you would, but it's okay. Nothing on that. Nothing on that. Perfect. So now you have prepped yourself. You have your fucking own cheat sheet. You have, you're also going to prep what I would call a present for the buyer. I love a present. And so what that would equal is my five pillar station folder, where I would have on one side, my buyer's packet, essentially, like people say buyer's presentation consultation, like I'm not that type of agent to be like, I need to do a consultation. Although no, I mean, if you do it, fuck yeah, I have the information and I have not done this before the actual showing. The pre screen is like, gathering information, figuring out what they're looking for, getting them pre-approved, ensuring they're qualified, and stuff like that. And then I do the actual like presentation in a few steps where you have five steps today. But back to the packet, the present, I have my buyer's packet on one side. And on the other side, I have the eight, the client view of the MLS cut sheets, again, in chronological order. So that is how I prep. Allie, any prep questions or comments or what you do? Do you give the same sheet that you're looking at the highlights also to the, to your buyers? I have the agent view for myself and this probably varies by MLS, but like in North Carolina, there's an agent view, which has all of the details information. And then there's a client view, which is like the abbreviated version with prettier but pictures. Like it just looks nicer. So I give them the client version. I keep the full scope of details. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, there's one thing I remember when I, before I was licensed, when I would look at properties with an agent, I would feel bad that they put effort into it. And I would, I was literally that client that would be in a house pretending like I was still interested in it, knowing that I wasn't because I felt bad that they put effort into it. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, no, we can, we can, we can move on. But this is after maybe five minutes in the house. Where so now knowing that that's that there are people out there like me before I even enter the house or before we even start like the the day before and before each property, each property, I'm like, by the way, if we come across a property that you're just like, nope, fuck no, this is not the house. Do not worry about even going inside. We do not have to go inside. And a way to eliminate that is like even putting that on your list of like the houses to go to is I have all of my clients do a, a couple of things. One of them being, if you're, if they're out of country, go on maps.google.com and virtually walk the neighborhood. That's a requirement before they even send me houses being like, Hey, I like this house or like this house. Okay. I always ask them again. Have you walked it? Have you virtually walked it? If they're out of country or if they're in the same city, have you physically been to that neighborhood yet? Cause that, that's, I want them to physically go check out, sc- scope out the neighborhood And if it's still a go, then yes, let's go back and let's go inside the property. Because a lot of times, neighborhood to neighborhood, this happens in every city, no matter where you live, this applies to you. Like the clients might not know that that is might, that's not in an area that they want to live, or maybe it's too far. They just never mapped it out. You know, so eliminate as much as you can, eliminate as many houses as much as you can. And that's how I think that my buyers, it takes less time for me to work my buyers. And I tell my buyers too, like once you know your buy box, you'll find that there are only five, maybe six or seven properties that actually meet your criteria, which is the truth. I mean, that's what I've seen. This is the truth for my clients. It's been the truth for me as a buyer. So don't go into houses that that their clients are not interested in. Dude, I love that, that tip so much. And yeah, and if 
Okay, because that, that's one of the things I was going to go over later because I didn't have that. I think that's an amazing tip. Have them virtually walk the neighborhood beforehand. But similar, if we're driving through a neighborhood where I'm like, I know I can tell these clients are not going to this neighborhood. If we stop in front of the house, I get out and I'm like, what do you guys think of the neighborhood so far? And if they're like, eh, I'm like, perfect. You know what? Let's get back in the car and let's keep going. Because it's addressing it as soon as you can to be hyper efficient. I love Allie's doing it ahead of time, just in case you don't do that and you do show up at a house. Don't waste your time. You don't have, or the same thing if you happen, if you go into the house and you just know right away, like maybe it smells like cat piss. Maybe it's, which I mean, if you're an investor, whatever, but maybe it's just like very off putting and you look over to their faces and if they're like, cut it, cut it, save your fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and guide them. You know, like it's, it's, I, I like that you're a little bit more, I, I don't want to say aggressive, but you, you lead them. You give them way more opportunity for them mm-hmm. to say no that instead of a 50 50 what like you know very very neutral response yeah. where they can go either way and oh they've already driven us here I might as well go in the house no 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 Let, let's get out of here no okay so tip number one was prepare that's it okay cool tip number two is set the tone so this is mirroring you guys have heard of mirroring if you haven't heard of mirroring it's like really important within like sales and psychology and how to make people like you But basically, if you know the person is, you know, never curses. And maybe Allie and I are fucking terrible at this because we both curse. But I promise you, I can turn it off. I'm sure Allie can too. And if the client is, you know, a certain persona where I know that my either attire or my mannerisms or my language is going to be very off-putting, mirroring people is a part of sales. It's not well, I just want to be myself. Okay, awesome. But you also want to close deals. And it's not about you. It's about how the person is perceiving your interaction and how they're, if you are able to on your first showing, get there early. This is not going to work if you're like caravanning and you show up at the same time or alley and you show up fucking 15 minutes later because you drive like grandma. But if you can show up early, you're going to open all the blinds, turn on the lights. If there's something that like got shitty from the last showing, maybe like they tracked in leaves or the rug screwed up or whatever, just make it look as nice as possible. And then now when the client arrives at this first house, this is still set the tone, by the way, introduce yourself, be excited. And because if you are excited, they're going to be excited. If you are like, oh, this is boring and I hate being here, they're going to hate being there. So you really do have a lot more control over the direction. And like Ali said, like the direction, the what their decisions made than you think you are. So really embrace that and be be a leader, which actually people this to remember. But anyway, so the client arrives, you're excited and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, hey, it's Shelby. It's so nice to meet you if you haven't met them in person already, which there's a whole lot to say about not going to a house with a stranger. Again, Shelby version 2018, 19, whatever. I just fucking meet. Most of the time they're referrals anyway. So they're like friends of friends. But anyway, and then you're like, hey, I have a present for you. And you can give them the packet and a pen, have extra pens in your car. And this is a buyer's packet and we'll go over it later today. But I just want to give it to you now because there's info on each one of the houses that we're seeing today. So as we go through, take notes so you can refer back to them. And at the end of each um, showing we're going to rate that home. So it makes it really easy for us at the end of the day to remember what you liked and didn't like and eliminate anything that is not going to make the cut. Ready? Okay. And okay. So before, do you have anything on setting the tone, Allie, before we move on with excitement, be excited for you, you know, like not everyone's excitement level is Shelby's excitement level, you know? So, and people can sniff when you're People can tell when you're just being over the top and there's nothing more gross than somebody being over the top, especially if you're, you're being so over the top with trying to sell yourself, sell the, sell the process that they are hyped up on this house and they go back into it during inspection. They're like, wait, now without the hype, this house is, doesn't match what I, the feelings that I had when I first walked in. So just make sure that whatever your level of personality is, whether, even if you're boring as shit, like own it. And then just be like a little bit above it, you know, put a smile on your face. So Shelby's level of excitement. Don't feel like you need to act, match Shelby's level. Just match your own and just be I a little dare bit more. you to try. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. For real. I call it the golden retriever method though. For me personally, and Allie's totally right. You got to find your own mo- mode. But who does, I mean, there are people who don't like dogs, but like a golden retriever that's so happy to see you. Like most people are like, oh, Wow. 
I mean, that's that's so endearing. And that's kind of like my strategy in life. I'm like golden retriever. Anyway. Okay. Tip number three is be a leader. What do I mean by this? People want to be led. So grab those reins. And this is what I do. Like right after I give them the pack and I'm like, ready, let's go. I'm like, okay, guys, have you ever seen a property before that you were considering purchasing? And most of the time they're like, yeah, kind of, you know, very unsure. Whatever their answer. Maybe it's like, man, I did it three years ago. And so I'm like, would you like for me to show you how I check out a property so you have an idea of the things to look for? And most of the time, like 99.9% of the time, they're like, oh my God, yes, please. And so I'm like, okay. And this worked really well because, you know, Allie and I are both, both investors. So I had walked a shit ton of houses and had an idea. The implied task is if you don't know what to look for in a house as you're walking through, you need to shadow amazing agents in your area or even better yet, a contractor walk a bunch of homes with a contractor and get an idea of what to look for, what price points are and stuff like that. That's just what I do. Okay. This is how I look at a property. I start right here on the street where we're at and I start at the top and I work my way all the way to the bottom to get the full picture. So let's start at the roof, you know, and then this is where you're like, okay, those are 30 year architectural shingles. They look like, you know, whatever you can, or if you have the disclosures, you know what the age of the roof is, but you start there and then it's okay. Gutters. And by the way, again, this is what I do. You do not have to do it this way. Find your own way, but it works really well for me to go through the roof, the gutters, the siding, the driveway. And each one is an opportunity to, to be like, oh gosh, do you see this like giant crack in the driveway? You guys are a VA. You guys are considering using a VA loan for this purchase. Just so you know, like these giant cracks that are making this, the driveway different levels that normally will come back on like an appraisal required repair as like a safety hazard. So that's something that we need to be looking for also as we're walking through the house. And you can go literally walk up to the house. You can do the door, the windows, et cetera. The landscaping is a great one to point out. And also comment when things are like the windows are new. You're like, oh my God, dude, those are new windows. Those are like 400 plus bucks per window. That's not freaking awesome. It's going to save you money on your, your electricity bill. So those are like the little things that they probably don't think of. But I have to make a caveat because I already just said a lot of words. And some of you listening are being like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed even listening to that. This is where awareness is everything. If you are working with someone who's a high D personality and they want the bottom line, they don't want all this fucking bullshit, you are going to give the person what they want. (laughs) If they are short on time, you're going to skip it. If they are detail oriented, lay it out for them and then ask be like, hey, is this information helpful? Are you appreciating this or do you just want to keep moving? And then if they're nice, they're not going to tell you, but you can read on their face. If there's like the slight delay of, then you're like, okay, perfect. Let's just zoom through this. And then you let me know if you have any questions. So basically, oh, and then one other note is if you can tell that they are loving it, even if you don't like it, don't shit on it. If you can tell they hate it, that's when you cut the the freaking whatever and move on. Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. Okay, perfect. So ultimately, your goal is to not freak your clients out. If but if they are freaking out, you need to address it head on because if they're trying to hide it for you, it's only going to get worse when they go back home and they start replaying it in their minds and talking with each other. And that little tiny monster that you could have addressed on the spot and squashed is now like fucking Godzilla. And they've talked their way into something terrible. Okay. And then you're like, you've, you've moved your way up to the house and it's okay. Now that we're inside, I recommend that we navigate it systematically so that we don't miss anything. Let's go left to right throughout the house. And then afterwards we can circle, we can go out back and then do a a circle. Good. Good. Okay. Perfect. And then you just start going through and now where's where you're going to use your cut sheet and you're going to be sound so smart, you know, like pointing out the different factors that kind of already talked about a little bit, but this is also where you are going to note all the things that that contractor told you to note. So you're going to look up. Most clients don't look up. You are going to look at the little, you know, if there's a water stain in the ceiling, you know, you're going to note that. And you can even point it out to them. Hey, just, you know, there is a little stain up here because you do not only want to say positive things. Like absolutely you build trust by highlighting the negative things as well. And then you're going to make a note on your freaking catch sheet that you brought in like water stain ceiling. And then I like to take pictures too. So that way, if they do like this house, you're not going to do this if they don't like the house. But if they do like the house, you can follow up with the listing agent and be like, hey, 
here are the things I noted. Here are the things we have questions on. Could you please provide answers? Also, if your client says the words, I wonder, those are opportunities for you to build trust and make them obsessed with you. Because if they're walking around and they're like, I wonder, fuck, I can't think of anything now. I wonder, I wonder how this... old the, the windows are. I wonder if there was ever yes. a, a stain here, if there was ever a water leak from this, you know, anything. Yeah, anything. Because yes. that... they wonder a Dude, lot. Dude, that is, they wonder so much. Little wonders, I make little bullets of their wonders. And again, don't do this if they, at the end, were like, I don't fucking like this house. But if they like the house, that's where every single wonder is an opportunity for you to be like, oh my gosh, I will follow up and I'll get that answer for you. And then you have to follow up and actually get the answer. But when you do it, they're going to be like, wow, Ali is literally the best person I've ever worked with ever. And then also as you're walking through, you are paying attention to the refrigerator and to the washer and dryer and the storage shed. And you're, if they're not conveying, this is why you have your cut sheet again, you need to be like, hey, don't fall in love with the fridge. It doesn't come with the house. Or, you know, just so you know, it doesn't come with. However, if you absolutely love it, I can talk to the listing agent. And we can see what we can try to work out. But those are all opportunities for you to educate as you go. Yep. After you go through the whole house, then you're doing the backyard. In North Carolina, crawl spaces are a fucking big deal. So peek your head in the crawl space, vapor barrier, standing water, fallen insulation, all signs of, if there's signs of moisture equals bad. We won't talk about inspections today. But then HVAC age, of course. And then after you've done the whole showing, you're going to be like, okay, guys, you saw your first house. Let's take a minute and talk about our rating system. Okay. We're going to rate this between one and 10. You cannot use the number seven because everyone just defaults to seven. So you have to make a decision. Is this less, little less than a seven? It's a six, little more than a seven. It's an eight. Trust me, you will appreciate this at the end of the day when we're going through this. But yeah, write that number. You can talk about it in the car, make more notes as we drive to the next house and then circle that number on the top right hand corner and then just fucking keep going. Man, I'm talking a million miles an hour. Allie, thoughts, questions, anything? That's funny that we haven't, so you and I have never spoken specifically about the one through 10 and, and the number seven. That's exactly what we do here as well, where again, if the clients are out of state, out of country, they're, they're military, they're moving here, sight unseen that they want to purchase. When they, after they have done the, the maps.google.com and drop the little yellow guy to go virtually walk the neighborhood, if we tell them, only pretty much only send us properties, like only send us like via text the properties that you're interested in, if they are an eight, a nine or 10 out of 10. Like if they're above seven, send it to us. Otherwise, there's actually there's no point of looking at it. You know, there's no point of looking at a lot of mediocre, ho- mediocre homes that you're really not all that interested in. So yeah, I, I always, we always tell our, our clients that here too. above seven, eight, nine, 10, send it to us after you've done maps.google.com. And if they're in person, something that I didn't mention before, like when we're touring as, as agents, we're touring typically during the day, it's daylight hours. They might get a different vibe during the day than at night. So if the clients are in like already in the area that you're living in, I always tell them again, before going inside the property, I'm trying to eliminate, I feel as an age, as an agent's job, it's our job to eliminate properties. So that way only the best ones are standing for our client. So go to the property on a Friday night or a Saturday night at midnight and do uh, walk the neighborhood. Do you feel comfortable? If you're comfortable, great. Let's keep it on the list. If you're not, there's no point of seeing it in the day. And I always, I feel like that's like advice that my dad always gave me when like purchasing property and like it helped, you know, because if you're, if you're not comfortable, why, why place an offer? Why even go inside? But I feel like a lot of people like have never thought about that. They're like, oh my God, I never thought about doing that. I'm like, yes, this Saturday, stay up late. Or it might not be late for them. It's late for me. <laughs> stay up late and go to the house at like midnight, one o'clock. Do you hear gunshots? <laughs> Are those fireworks or gunshots? Dude, so late. That's really good advice. Thank you, Mr. Garza. Out there somewhere. Okay. You know what? It's funny because tip number four is narrow, which is basically what Allie's been talking about this whole time. So she has fucking tip number four down. So yeah, basically decisions are hard. And the more you can guide them through the decision making process, do not leave it up to them to decide on their own. I've actually heard, you know, work with so many agents and talk to agents over the years where they're like, yeah, and after the showings, I'll just let them go home and say, hey, let me know what you decide. No, no, don't let them go and let let you know what they decide. Whenever you're like, let me know what you decide the chances of you ever getting a response are so much slimmer. And actually this applies, this is a scripting thing we did the other day where agents will do this 
when they're letting people know that they're an agent, they're like, hey, let me know if you ever need an agent. I'd be happy to help. They're never going to fucking let you know. It does not work that way. It is your job as an agent to guide them to the decision making point. And if you can get it there, we can talk about strips another day, but then it will increase your likelihood of being able to move forward and, and get them to the home faster, but also get you to closing faster. This is a lot of this is efficiency. Okay. But yeah, so you are going to help them narrow. You're going to on the spot. Hey, let's lay out. Do we have a clear winner? Do you have a couple favorites? How are you feeling? What are the questions that you have floating around in your head right now? And make them tell you. Don't just be like, oh, no questions. Okay, move on. Look for it in their face. Look for it in their body language. Be like, oh, there was a hesitation. What was that? You know, and do it in a way that's not like creepy or aggressive. But like you have to force the outcome that you and your clients need. Okay, you're going to narrow it. And depending on their, their top pick, maybe top two. I'm not as assertive as Allie, which, you know, maybe I should be. Then depending on that, if there are a bunch of I wonders or there's questions that you guys had moving through the process, this is your time to research. You, you know, go back and and do your research only on those topics. Don't read fucking read. I used to research everything in the beginning. I was like, oh, I can find answers on all this stuff. That happened not that long because that was a terrible time. So don't be like that. Okay. And at this time, this is also when I do my buyer's packet because once they've narrowed it and they're like, oh my God, this might be the one I freaking really like that house. I'm like, okay, perfect. Let's take that vision of that house and let's pull it back down into what what it actually takes, what the process actually looks like to get there. And I found that this works really well for me because if you tell people a lot of information up front, when it's some big hypothetical thing, in one ear, out the other. Like their chances of retaining that information increase substantially when there's skin in the game, when they want something, you know? And so if they have a house that they like, it's like, okay, perfect. Now let's go through what the buyer's process looks like. And you know, pull out your buyer's roadmap. You're going to say, you know, who the team is, the cost to expect, like all of the things that you have in your buyer's packet, which by the way, if you're like, I don't have one, hit Ali or I up. We both have easy Google drive of these buyer packets that we've already laid out in formats that you can change out your logo and all that stuff. So hit us up if you do want copies of that, because I'm not going to dig into it today. But Nero is tip number four. And the final tip for you is next steps. Tip number five is called next steps. And what I mean by that is never leave any conversation without clear next steps. Like at this point, do you have, if they're like, I want to offer and you've just gone through the buyer's packet and you've talked through what the offer looks like, then you have to be like, okay, what's next is I'm going to go back. I'm going to call a listing agent. I'm going to confirm these items, talk through what the initial offer, you know, test it out with the seller to see if it's something that they'd go for. And then within 24 hours, I will send you the documents. I'm just pulling this out of my house right now. But do you understand what I'm saying about here's what's next? I'm going to do this. You're going to do this. And this is the time frame that you can expect to hear from me from. If you do those things, then they're going to have a clear idea. They won't get in the car and be like, wait, what, what happens? What do I need to do? And that's how you fucking lock people in. If you're not able to provide the clear next steps, hell yeah, they're going to try to potentially be like, well, maybe this agent is better. Maybe I'll know what all I'm doing if I find a different agent. Okay. Allie, thoughts, questions? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. 100%. I mean, and to go back a little bit, well, I guess to go back to the beginning, (laughs) when you're, what I tend to do is I structure like the, the, how the order of viewing homes that used to get me so much. I used to be like, do, should I just go from North to South? Should I go from what I think they're going to like best to what I think they're going to like least? Should I go the opposite direction, least to best? And then I'm just like predicting, you know, and it's, it's what I have, everyone does this differently. What I have found is if we're going to be viewing homes or if I'm going to be viewing homes for them, just sending them like, you know, videos, I tended to, leave the vacant homes at the end because traffic, because I get hungry (laughs) because I drive like a grandma, I guess. (laughs) So just like shit comes up. And especially if you're with clients, even though you tell them, Hey, we only have a 15 minute window or we only have a 30 minute window. 
shit comes up. So I, I personally tend to leave the homes that are vacant at the end, as opposed to having to coordinate while you're driving on the go to the listing agent. What's the listing agent's number? Okay, I wrote it down here. Let me text it here. This house, we're actually going to be 30 minutes late. And they're like, what the fuck? Now the sellers have to stay out that out of the house for another 30 minutes. They're dog. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like I try to avoid all that and give them a big, I try to do a, a big window too. Like when I, when I go to book it, if, if you're not using showing time, I try to just book an hour. Okay. Even if we spend 10 minutes out of the hour, like I at least booked it for a whole hour because <laughs> in some areas showing time isn't all that common. Like here in Tucson, it's not all that common. So there's a lot of, are you there yet? Did you, what'd you think? And then of course the follow-up also would bug me too. Cause I'm still driving, you know, like we still have four more houses to see. And the listing agents are like, any feedback? I'm like, bitch, I'm still driving. So I, before I even like the day before I'm like, okay, expect feedback the next day at, at the, you know, at the earliest the next day. So that way they're not bugging me. Cause I do the same thing too. You know, like I, I'm like ragging on listening agents, but I do the same thing. I'm like, Oh, 10 minutes later. What'd you think? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I don't know. That's just my opinion on like structure. Cause there's always, there's a whole method to it, you know, of like which houses do I see? First? Totally. What, what there is a lot. Could you hold- no, I, I love that. That's a great point. So I, I, I never scheduled it in that manner. Like I scheduled it in the most efficient route for my driving time. <laughs> and that yeah. was it like period. But I think that that makes a lot of sense what you said. And in most of the homes, most of them were not seller occupied. So most of them were vacant of all of the showings that I've done, I would even say most overall were vacant. And so having the the point is that last house being vacant is so important because that's when it's like, hey, okay, let's spread out your cut sheets. Let's go through what you liked, what we didn't like. Let's lay out this packet. And you're not really going to do that if the seller is outside (laughs) in their fucking car down the street with their dog and their whole family in their car waiting for you to be done. So good good point, Allie. Which is totally, I've been there. My goodness, I've been there. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like the seller wants to go back in the house. And she's, yeah, but like the vibe of this house is so nice. I'm like, okay, let's take some photos and let's look at the vibe after. Right. Let's go buy this world. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Okay. And that's, I mean, dude, there are so many little things that we could dig deeper into. So guys, if you're listening, first of all, you should be watching on YouTube and you should fucking subscribe to this shit. We're trying to get that YouTube channel up. But anyway, if you like this type of content with Allie and I literally just talking through how we do stuff, gotta let us know. Would you please let us know? Because even through this, like we could do an entire conversation on the buyer's packet. We could do an entire conversation on fuck other things that I can't think of right now. So <laughs> if you like this, DM Allie at Allie the agent and me at the Shelby show and let us know. Also, if you don't like it, fucking let us know that too. Yeah. But no. I think I did promise that we were going to do life updates, but this is already, this was supposed to be a short. Maybe we'll do it. Do you want to do a life updates real quick, Allie? Or do you want to do, do it? it on our next let's one? do it. Let's do it. You're so cute. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> life updates. You go first. I've been talking a lot. Yeah. Thank goodness. Finally, I can talk. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Fuck you. Life, life update. Oh, let's see. I am moving in about a month to St. Paul, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, I'm glad that I'll be moving not in the dead of winter. And so I'm going to be starting a crew out there. My first, I want to start being connected to other agents that I can send referrals to being that that is my business right now is 90, more like 85% outbound referrals. So if you are in the St. Paul, Minnesota area, please let me know. I want to, I want to start like getting those connections in place. And continuing the YouTube channel, the YouTube channel is bringing in eight to nine leads a month. I'm going to start a whole new one up, up there. So I'm working on that behind the scenes. I mean, of course, not the St. Paul one yet, because I'm not there yet. I, I would feel like a fraud. So I don't know what it's like living in St. Paul. So, but I'm going to have a shit ton of content from my New York and then Tucson perspective. So, but it was nice seeing you at, at Rockstars. It was cool that it, it was actually, so fun. yeah. And it was, I got a lot of pretty good feedback from the presentation that I gave, which is going to be the next episode is outbound referrals. Like how, if you're interested in becoming an outbound referral only agent, that's what I do. And I want to help you. So anyway, stick around for the next episode for that. But that's like pretty much it. My throat hurts and uh, we're still doing this because we are dedicated. We're both sickies. That's right. (laughs) What's a life update for you? (laughs) A life update. I think I was just going to say that I also had a really good time at Rockstars. The 
Okay, for those of you who don't know, the Real Estate Rockstars podcast has an annual mastermind attached to it. And this was the third annual ever back in the beginning of March in Austin, Texas. And I planned a lot of it. I did a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, which was a really, really cool learning experience for me because I really do feel like I have a grasp on events now between Pillars Retreat and between the Real Estate Rockstars Mastermind. I have fucking, you know me, I got the checklist, the timelines, the email templates, the whole, the lots and lots of stuff. So if I ever, you know, want to do an actual event, which I do in the future, I fucking got that shit. And I'm like pumped about that. It was very cool. And just overall communicating with like bigger names. I mean, like Cody Sanchez for in particular, it's cool to see the amount of staff. I mean, to me, there was like so many staff behind the scenes, but like she lives in Austin. And so it's not even like she had to travel. It's just that, but she, there was like fucking 14 admin and different people like sending me slides and updates and like, where are we going to meet? And how, who's doing ballet and all of these little things that I'm just like, wow, when you start to deal with people who are very, very well known, she has 1.5 million uh, followers on Instagram. And I don't, I don't know what she does on YouTube and all that stuff. But you get to a point where their time is so fought over that they just have all of this leverage in place to protect, incubate the little time. So I thought that that was very interesting. And honestly, she was so fucking nice. Like she gave me two hugs and she smelled very nice. I'm such a weird smeller. I am. I'm so weird. Is that because you I smell bad? Therefore, any time, therefore, like you're just Maybe. used to smelling other people smelling good. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, wow. You <laughs> definitely showered today. Okay. <laughs> So it's not okay. That reminds me of, so I used to work protective service, like within, within OSI, Office of Special Investigations, we used to like a segment of that, a specialty is working protective service for distinguished visitors. And I hated it. I hated it. And it's so funny because you are good at it. Checking out the area beforehand, you know, of course, like bringing the canines, see if there are any bombs, but just all of every single second is planned. Like if the if the five star three star whatever wants to go to lunch here let's check it out but if he wants to go to lunch here let's check that out too and all of these like potential contingencies that never fucking happen because the two star one shows up and then decides to go to the mall and we didn't check out the mall you know like it's oh man it, so yeah when you say 14 levels i'm like oh my god i was i was there i did not like that yeah it was a lot but it is and it's cool to see and also so many things that i've learned from just agent life applied you know, like the follow up, the fact that you set a deadline and no one's gonna. So then you set the deadline in advance because you know that at least you need three days of follow up every single day in order to get the slides, which (laughs) Allie was one of my exhibit A. It's all good. Your slide, your fit was fantastic. Just had to follow up for the slides. Yeah. And then morning of, I I changed it on you. Morning of, I was like, here you go, Shelby. Here's another one. (laughs) Love you. I was like, classic. (laughs) Fucking classic. (laughs) It's so um, funny. All good though. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, overall, like, I just, I really like the event because I like, I love like the before and after hours, just like hanging out with everyone and like really getting to have real deep conversations. But yeah, were you going to say something? Were you saying something? What was I going to say now? I forget. Oh, yeah. So going back to me sending my slides very late. So I sent you, <laughs> I think it was the morning of. And then yeah. right the week after that, I went to RubeCon, Real Estate Wealth Builders, and gave a similar, uh, the same topic, but for a different audience. And I thought that I'd be able to use the same slides. I'm like, oh, I'm good to go. Morning of, I changed my slides completely because the audience was like 50% not licensed. So they're like, what are these words even, you know? So I changed it completely. And, and yeah, so it's, it was interesting it, in case you're listening to this and you're not even the licensed agent reach out to me. I can give you the licensed version or the not licensed version of what I spoke at, at RubeCon and real estate wealth builders. I mean, and rock stars, all these conferences. And but I'm finally back home. So many life. conferences. And in case you guys didn't know, Allie and I both do 30 minute strategy calls with people. If you guys are just like stuck on something in your business or want to bounce ideas off of. And so if you are interested in a strategy call, you can also hit us up for that. Yeah, for sure. Ah, and that's it. For sure. I think we did it. Cool. We did it. So coming up next, we're going to do Allie's referral agent presentation. So make sure you tune in for next whatever show. Okay. And that's it. On right, Allie? the agent gold mine.
Fuck yeah. Be a bro, be a bro and share yeah. this, this show. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show.